Welcome to Excel Med Strict number 1156. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, here's a great question. I've never seen this question. It says names are in column A, and column B has U or N for new or use, but column C also has U or N, and we need to count all of the ends and all of the use for each person. Now what's strange about this is this is not a proper data set. A proper data set copy would be like this. Copy, these are the un unique values, right? These names go with these, which are already there, but then these names have to go with these. So proper data set control V would be like that two columns, control Z, 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 but we don't have that. We need to match these up with boom and boom. So let's look at two ways to do this. And each way will have a merit or a reason that we should use it. Now the first one I'm going to use count ifs. And actually in both cases, we're actually going to have to use mixed cell references. Because look, we have criteria for N for this column, and we have criteria Joe for this row. But we're going to start off with the count ifs. And the big advantage to count ifs as compared to array formulas that we'll do down here is count ifs are much faster calculating. And this really matters if you have huge data sets. If you don't, it doesn't matter. But count ifs, criteria range, we have two conditions, right? So our first range will be that, F4, comma, and the criteria for that range is going to be the name. Now. We have to use mixed cell references. When we copy it to the sign, we need to lock that E right there and not have it move. So we're going to put a dollar sign in front of the E. I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Ah, but I don't want a dollar sign in front of the 7 because when I copy it down, I want that orange cell to move down to fill, not locked on the 7. Comma, the second criteria range, F4 comma, and then the criteria. Here, we're using the end. This is at the top of the column. When we copy down, we need it locked. So we need to lock the 6. When we move from F to G, we do not want the F locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 one, two times. Close parentheses. That will not work. That gives me just the count from this column. But watch this. I'm going to highlight, Control C, come to the end plus control V. And what we need to change, and I'm going to come over to the screen tip. There's a bunch of ways we can do this, but watch this. I can click on that criteria range, just like in Word. If you highlight a word and start typing, it replaces it. So here, I'm simply going to highlight. You can see right there, F4. Now, of course, all of these ranges need to be locked down and over, so they have dollar signs everywhere. Now, the advantage to this one is that the count ifs will and I didn't time this. In my array formula book, I did extensive timing comparing count ifs, sum ifs, average ifs against array formulas, and the count ifs always seem to win. But the advantage would be speed and calculating. But the disadvantage here is this is a lot longer formula. Control Enter, double click and send it down, and copy it over to the side. Whenever you copy through a range, you always go to the diagonally furthest one away and hit F2 to put it in edit mode and make sure the lovely rainbow colored range finder is pointing to all the right cell references. It is. All right, escape. Now let's see an array formula, and we're going to use the sum product function. Now what we're really going to do is we're going to take a, a 7 by 2 dimension range and multiply it by a 7 by 1, meaning 7 rows, 1 column. Inside the sum product array times array using commas, it doesn't allow different sized arrays. So no problem. We'll just use the multiplication symbol, and we'll put all of the multiplication inside of the first array. We will use the array argument in some product because it can handle array operations without any special keystroke, meaning Control Shift Enter. So you ready? In parentheses, we'll take the whole range F4, and we say, are any of you equal to Rn? And I'm going to lock this with the F4, lock going down, but not to the side. Close parentheses. Now, that'll give us trues and falses, but by multiplying or doing any math operation, those trues and falses will be converted to ones and zeros. Now, multiplying is an AND 
logical operator. So only when it sees a true here and a true in our second test, F4, and we'll ask the question, are you equal to the row header and lock it one, two, three times with the F4, lock the column but not the number. So these two different sized arrays, we're using multiplication to get around some product's limitation. But true times true will end up as a 1. True times false will be 0. False times true will be 0. And false times false will be 0. Again, that's an AND operator. Only when we get two trues will we get a 1. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now I can double click and then copy it over. Go to the last cell in F2. And sure enough, the cell references are pointing. I love that range finder. So this one is a little bit easier to type out, but uh, definitely take a little bit longer to calculate. So we have some product to do this non-proper data set counting with criteria, or we can use count ifs. All right, we'll see you next trip.